I'm so excited to have this opportunity to bring Yuladi Saluti to the podcast today. Yuladi, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Nice I'm to doing, meet you. I know. I'm so excited because I know we tried to get this to happen for a little while now. So now that the moment is here, I'm I'm just thankful. So yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. No, thank you for being so understanding. Of course, of course. So I have a lot of questions for you. Uh, I've been following you on Instagram and I find that you have a very inspirational message. And I guess to get started, the first thing I noticed on your Instagram, the very first thing you have written is uh, Noli Stan. And yeah. So obviously that's your, your baby. Yes, it's my granddaughter. That's your granddaughter. Um, oh, yes, cool. yes. All right, all right. So a little background on me. Um, my husband and I have been together 20 years and we are a blended family. So when I met him, I had a daughter from a previous relationship mm. and he was, he had three kids from a previous relationship. Mm. And then we have two together. We had two together. So we are like six all together and wow. um, we're, we're a big family. So my, um, my oldest, I call them all my kids. I hate this the term stepchildren yeah. because I, I grew up with a stepdad myself and he hated when I said that. And, you know, eventually I was like, yeah, I get it. I get it why he doesn't like step, step kids, stepdad. So I called all my kids. So my older, my older son, Jerry, got married during the pandemic mm -hmm. to a lovely girl and they had a baby on... Yeah. Um, uh, last September. So I decided that I was going to turn my Instagram account into a, a, a Noli fan page. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Because she's, she's the best. Can you share what it's like to be a grandparent? Oh my God. It, it's, <laughs> I was the other day I, I said to my husband, cause I was babysitting. I babysat her for a few hours all by myself. I just had her all. And I was like, this, can it get any better than this? And this goes for people that have their own children, like picture that yeah. feeling when you have your own baby and then magnify by like a hundred. Wow. That's the greatest feeling. Wow. And you're just like, I can't believe like I'm lucky enough to be part of like this, this baby is mine. Like not mine, but like, it's like, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's my baby. <laughs> Even my grandkid. It's a different type of love than a child's love. And it's like bigger. I don't know if that makes it any justice. That gives it any justice. Yeah, that's a great explanation. It's funny. I have a friend who used to always say he's grandpa and he said, it's double happiness. And I said, double happiness is like, well, I'm yes. so happy when they show up. And then when their parents come to pick them up, I'm, I'm even happier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It Just is so funny. It's like, you get, you get to do all the hanging out and they're like, I get to drive home and sleep all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You get a full night's sleep and then have to yeah. go the next day. Oh, that's amazing. Yuladi. That's yes. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Where, you know, I mean, where do I even begin? I mean, uh, how about, can you talk about what got you started on the journey of yoga practice? I know you have a lot of talents and I definitely want to go down the track of what you're really passionate about right now as a runner, but I want to <laughs> kind of start where your intro into yoga and healing began. Well, yoga is my, I guess, was my my number one passion first passion probably will always be my number one passion you know um and it all started actually my husband um I don't even think I've ever heard of yoga before I met him and he said I uh his ex-wife actually says my ex-wife has been going to yoga I think you would like it and then a yoga studio in the town I think two towns over opened up and we're like all right let's go and it was a Bikram class and I fell in love. And it's like, this is the most amazing thing. Like the sweat, the folding the poses, the breathing, everything. Just, I, I, I immediately fell in love with this. And then we started to go almost every day after my husband would get out of work. Yeah. Our first thing was to get to that yoga class. It was like this, this wonderful reward at the end of the day. And um, so two weeks into it, I mean, no, two months into it, right around, I got sick. Mm. And I noticed that, like, I just couldn't handle any physical, and, and not not the heat, not the physical part of it, nothing. Like, I was in and out of hospitals, um, and a lot of pain. I mean, like, maybe, like, 
10 out of 10 pain Whoa. and uh, nobody could figure out what was going on. And I had, to, I have had a surgery uh, two years prior to, to that. Oh, and, and then another one a year later for this um, mass that was, um, that they found in my colorectal area. So very high up into the rectum, like mm -hmm. right where the colon and the rectum meet. Yeah. And it was biopsy. And, wow. and, um, at that time I didn't have great health insurance. Um, so I didn't question anything. I said, okay, let's get a biopsy. And I went and got the biopsy and that night I got re I got really sick and then it uh, got really, really infected. And uh, I ended up with like some pain, then another surgery that fixed it and then another surgery. And then it gave me like a year's relief. And that's in that year is when I met my husband, we met shortly after that, we moved in together and then he, and then that's how I, I, um, I found yoga. So uh, my yoga yeah. life took a pause for many years because I was sick for many years after that. And then I, I went to have children. Um, what happened in part of my, my, my uh, medical journey was I, I needed a colostomy bag, which mm. is for those who don't know what a colostomy bag is, they um, essentially pull your intestine out of your body and sew it to the outside of your stomach in your poop out of there they cut the intestine they, they, they cut the intestine out and they put it out so you don't no longer poop out of your rectum you know you're you yes. don't use that area anymore you poop into a bag that you change all the time like a couple times a day if you need to yes. um and i was very young i was in my early 20s so i was very uncomfortable yeah having that like yeah. Uh, I didn't want to share it with anybody. I was, I kept very to myself. Many people that didn't know me, like if you met me, you would never know that I, I would never even mention it. And um, I, so that kept me from ever going back to, even when I started to feel better, ever going back to a yoga class. Do you feel like because of the fact that it would be noticeable that you had that in relation to whatever outfit you had on and or? Yes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And also yep. another thing, which I'm very comfortable with now in, it actually took me many years to get where I am was when you have this, you, when you pass gas, you have no control over it, you know, cause there's no muscles holding. So yeah. it just comes and it makes the noise and same thing with poop. It comes whenever, you, when I, so yeah. that always made me so uncomfortable. Like I don't want to fart in, in public and have somebody. <laughs> yeah. So to me, that was like, Oh my God, now it happens all the time. And I'm with clients and I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. And they just, we just laugh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it took me a long time to get comfortable with it. I believe it. I hear you. Did so you when were you able to then actually go and take a yoga class in a setting where you did was it that you walked in and thought, I'm so uncomfortable, I'm so nervous, I don't know how am I gonna deal with this, but you overcame that fear and did it anyway, or was there some No, I said to my I after my uh after my last child who that was born in two thousand and eight, mm -hmm. um I said to myself, like I started working out and I got my bag reversed. And I was about to like in the process of getting my bag reversed to have anything. But I, I like I said it out loud, like go about like think about manifesting, right? I said out loud, like hey, if I you know, like if I get my bag reversed, I'm gonna go back to yoga. Like I cannot <laughs> wait to go back to yoga. And I manifested that within weeks because then a yoga studio opened at, in my town. I mean minutes from my house. So I got my bag reversed and I was given the okay to go back to, to, to exercising. So I'm like, all right, let me go back to yoga. And this was different. This was a hot yoga studio, but it was, it was vinyasa. It was, a, you know, the flow of vinyasa. So I remember my first and only experience with yoga before was Bikram and yeah. there's no down dogs. There. So it was a learning process from like, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what to do. I don't know the names. What are these names? Yeah. Good point. But yeah, I, I I just I just finished that class and I it was the feeling that I had was such a good feeling and I I fell in love immediately and I said to myself I'm like what is this like I want this again yeah and like a good uh, uh, overachiever that I that I am type eight person I started coming every single day and then yeah. and like 
telling my husband like you okay you gotta come back to yoga like this is amazing <laughs> and it took me like a few a few weeks but then he was there with me every night and practicing every night and i you know very quickly i noticed that it came very natural to me mm. i was very flexible um I, I i was like okay so then that it's like a very um it was like a boost, you know, here I am being sick, raising children. I'm like, just a mom. I have been, I've been the sick person in a mom for many years. And I step into onto my mat and I'm good at this yoga thing. Not only mm. does it make me feel good, but I'm good. So it gave me a boost. That's cool. Just in that, like, yeah. I guess fed my ego a little bit, kept me coming back, you know? And yeah. the more that I did it, the more that I fell in love and I, decided that I think it was maybe it wasn't even a year into it it was like I had somebody had told me like I had asked somebody at the yoga studio like how can I how can I do a yoga training like I don't know that I want to teach but like I want to learn more like I want to yeah. know it yeah. all <laughs> and they yeah. told me like you could do a teacher training and I think I think um that the you that you need to be able to do a headstand in the middle of the of the of the floor without using a wall and that like that and, and, and like have a practice that I don't know if that's true that's what I was told and that that's when you're ready to do you know to do a teacher training so yeah. I was like oh well okay I've been practicing for a few years I mean for a few months and I could do a headstand in the middle of the uh, you know in the middle yeah. of the floor without a wall so I'm gonna do it and then I started researching um I started researching all of this yoga stuff but before that I'd been in the spirituality path before yoga um since i was pregnant with my with my uh second child uh through meditation mm -hmm. so uh again my husband showed me meditation and i started i got a book about it and i and i tried all these types of meditations and um so prior to even finding yoga i was really into that and deepak chopra was like my guy like yes. i loved him everything he he talked about it's almost like he resonated with me i understood him even yeah. though he yeah. we use doctor terminology I'd be like why do i get this guy like he was just really really and i started i started to read his stuff and i bought dvds about his in learning and stuff so i i went online and i uh something came up about deepak chopra's uh yoga teacher and then i was like i went and i saw her and her name is Tara Styles. And I was like, oh, she's in New York. Awesome. I'm like 40 minutes. At the time, I lived 40 minutes maybe outside of New York, outside, outside of Manhattan. Yeah. And I, 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 I think I maybe emailed. And I was like, I'm really interested in, in doing a teacher training. And, it, and I went and I met her and her husband. And right away, we had a connection, like an instant connection. And um, that's how I started my yoga teacher training. And it was really great because it was like, it was, it, it was only on the weekend. So it really helped me because I had, you know, six children at home. Yeah. Um, it was in the yeah. weekends and, yeah. um, it, there was no need to do a pet stand with no wall. <laughs> <laughs> there were no requirements. She just said, you just want to be here and learn, you know, that's and cool. that's my, that's my journey into, into yoga. And, uh, and then, you know, obviously much more came after that, but I don't want to take all your time talking because I could talk for the whole hour. No, if you want me to. <laughs> you're, you're making my job so easy. I love it. Thank you. Uh, a couple of things that I thought of while you're, while you were speaking, you said that you started meditation practice and when you were pregnant with your, was your first or second child? Second child. Second. Was there yeah. like an intuition that you had be, from being pregnant that caused you to feel like there was some type of communication process that was happening that was beyond just say the verbal communication we have like in our experience uh, as a mom, what was the catalyst that kind of got you, piqued your interest about yoga and spirituality? Uh, well, from a, when I was, when I, when I was growing up, I was, alcohol was always around mm -hmm. and it was never a taboo. So nobody ever wanted to like, I, I was born and raised in Colombia until I was 13, moved here. And it was never a taboo. Like I noticed when I moved here, all the American kids were obsessed with drinking. Mm -hmm. In my house, my parents said, if you want to drink, go ahead and drink. Mm -hmm. um, I never did. Drinking wasn't like, it wasn't anything that was an issue for me. Mm -hmm. um, 
and drugs were never an issue for me either. Uh, but when I was 21 years old, I was uh, in a relationship where um, I, I had been in a relationship for like a year already where I like I, I gave a lot of myself and this person that I was in a relationship with um, didn't give as much as I did. And at this, at least that's how I felt. And then one day I was really sad because I hadn't heard from him all, all day. Right. Like this is it, this is just in my head. This is where I was at the time. And I remember I was out with some friends and they're like hey do you want to do some coke and I said I've said no to drugs many times before I don't like I never liked smoking pot and that moment like the sadness that I had that to me was like oh like this person doesn't like me and that's why he hasn't called me all day then I was like all right and then that sadness left mm -hmm. for those 20 minutes that I did that and I was like I'm in love with this drug. This is the best <laughs> drug ever. I want it all. And I'm like, and I didn't know anything about drug. I didn't know nothing. You know, being from Colombia, like we, and no cocaine comes from Colombia. It's like our parents are like, never do coke. And like, in our head. And like, so we're like afraid of it. So even pot, it's like, nah. So, um, so like that, I fell in love with, in, in, you know, came to realize. I also had ADHD growing up and had a hard time in school. And so this all starts to fall into a place like now I'm self-medicating and uh, it, it, all these, it, all these very strong feelings that I'm having um, are being muted with this drug and I love it. And I'm out my teen mom. I had my daughter at, at 19 years old. So um, I was 20 years old when I did this drug and I'm in love with it. So very quickly I became addicted to it, but very quickly, I realized that like, oh, I can't do this. I have a child. I have somebody to take care of. Like, I can't be doing this thing because that that kid, um, you know, it, her life depends on me. And um, the I happened to have a good support system at the time too. Like the, the boyfriend that I was with at the time, he like got his big boy pants on and got me a rehab and got me on the process of like, you know, like getting clean and sober. And obviously that relationship didn't work, but he did his part. He helped me a lot, you know? Yes. Um, so go, then in rehab, I learned all about like, oh, like these drugs really could take you down. Like I could, I have to really be careful. Mm -hmm. um, then I learned um, from people sharing that NA and A are very similar. They're the same steps, the same, everything is exactly the same, but um, what I started to notice and what I, people had shared is in NA, the A uh, sobriety people, like they were, they would just stay sober longer, you know, like mm -hmm. they would just, yeah. NA were a lot of relapses in and out. So I chose to go with AA when I came out of rehab and I even stopped drinking too. So, cause I wanted to be completely not at least sober. Cause I, you know, one lo one drug leads to another and it was true. Like there were a few times, you know, sobriety was, it's not linear. So there were a few times that I would have a drink and then yes, guess what? Immediately I would relapse on Coke. So, um, I stayed completely sober from Coke and in alcohol. And, um, that's during that process is where I met my husband as well. He is also sober. He is, uh, we met in the rooms of AA yeah. which is one of those stories that if you ever hear like the, our relationships like us, like that we meet in AA, they don't work. They don't They're just two together. addicts getting it's together. Like <laughs> that is a hot mess. Um, <laughs> but here we are 20, year late, 20 years later. Yeah, we did work. And so that takes me to like him, him and I meeting, getting sober together. Like we were, he was just sober from alcohol. Alcohol was his drug of choice. And, you know, and he would, you, you know, and I would, I would see him. I would be like, oh, okay. You're, you know, you're suffering a little less than me. Like, what is it? And he's like, oh, I, you know, I read Eckhart Tolle and, and uh, you know, the power of now. And then I tried reading the power of now and I'm like, I don't get it, you know? <laughs> and that's how I found Deepak Chopra because I heard something of his yeah. and much more complicated, but I got it, you know? Like, yes. but then and I went back to Eckhart Tolle and then I, I then understood and then I, then, I, then I got the message. So I know, I knew during that, that like, I know that, that there was like, there was something, like there was something missing from me that I was feeling I, that I, you know, 
and it was a very quickly, like I met my husband when I was 23 years old. So like my, my drug addiction didn't, you know, I got it under control almost right away. Yes. So it was like, uh, it, it wasn't, you know, thank God. Cause a lot of you, you have to have a lot of bottoms to, to get clean and sober. I didn't, I, you know, I pretty much the first bottom that I hit, I was like, I gotta get out of here, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, so knowing that, and I think going through all of that and all the drugs, I mean, the drugs and the, you know, in the, um, the feelings that I got when I had it, when you're coming down from it, knowing that I knew something was missing in me. Like, I know there's something, there's something that like, that it's missing in me and I need to, I need to, or, or, or something not miss, not, not missing, but something not okay in me. And yeah. how can yeah. I do the work to fix it or to make it better? And I, you know, I'm in early twenties. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that when I read, when Jerry told me about my husband, Jerry told me about meditation that whenever I close my eyes and I focus on my breath, it was almost like that feeling of cocaine, like the worry not immediately like cocaine yeah. went away, yeah. but it just yep. kind of got yeah. a little better. Yeah. And then the next time I did it, I got a little better. And then, then I started to have control over my feelings. Mm. Like I don't have to react every time something yeah. happens. So that was how come I started to, to meditate. And it happened to be when you know, my, when I was pregnant with my, with my first, with my second, with my first son, my second child, um, that, that, that happened. But yeah, I, I think it's because something so shocking happened to me. That is a great answer. Yulari. I love that. Um, I appreciate that you backed up far enough to give me the backstory to help me understand that, that, uh, answer. So that, that's amazing. I definitely appreciate how honest and open you are about your life and your story what is some advice you could give me and or if you're listening, <laughs> whoever's listening <laughs> that is like oh, man i want to be open like that but i'm scared to speak my mind my heart my truth what what kind of coaching could you give us to uh help help us like break a barrier there or break through something um, think about the consequences that you think are going to be, are going to happen if you are going to share and be open like that. Right. So possibly, you know, you, are you going to lose a job that you probably shouldn't. Right. Um, to me, I decided to share very openly my, uh, my experiences, my, hardships because I wanted to help others because selfishly uh, it helps me you know to help others right that's like number one I'm selfish I want to feel good and I want to help others <laughs> two I wanted to um be very um straightforward with my children and say listen I and I then I did this as I my kids are all between the ages of 14 and 28 29 um and once they were of age i said to them except except for my last my last two last last two one i have a funny story about that but uh, i said to the, the older ones I, I was like listen i sorry i had a phone call <laughs> no problem. i said um i i am a cokehead and it only took me that one line the first line to get addicted to it that's it. So you're probably a co-kid and you're probably going to get addicted to this, you know, like, it's a, be careful. Like it does only take one time. So I want you know, so I wanted my kids to be aware of that, that that's a, that's, that's a possibility. And it happened to me, it could happen to you. And then when I decided that I was going to be open like this, I let my older, my oldest, um, four children know, and they were really behind us. They knew their father was a recovered alcoholic. And I'm like, you guys are probably alcoholics too, because so be careful. Just I'm not telling you not to drink. Just be like no, like take an inventory of yourself when you are doing it, because it does it does run in the family. And my two little ones, I didn't, I wasn't ready. I, I I didn't know when I could have this conversation with them yet. And my 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 second child, my my oldest boy, googled me. He's a computer person. He's yeah. like loves. He he knew how to, he taught him to use the computer at two years old, and because of that. 
he learned how to read by looking at the computer on oh, his own. Wow. I had, oh, and wow. my other son, he's all equally the same way. Like just wow. like such Brilliant. a smart two boys. Yeah. So they, they like much sooner than I thought I was going to have to have a conversation <laughs> with them. And then, then he comes to me and he's like, Oh my God, you're a cocaine addict, like crying. And I'm like, okay, hold on a minute, hold on. What happened? And he's like, I just Googled you and he said here that you're, because I've written an article that kind of went viral in the yoga world um, called uh, Confessions of a Coke Hit Turn Yogi. Mm. And that he read that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so God. then I had to explain to him that, you know, like, yes, I had a cocaine problem. And I don't, I haven't done cocaine in many, you know, since before you were one. And he was very like, ah, he like, he goes, oh, okay. So you don't do that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is a, this is why I wanted to share. And, you know, now he's um, 16 and my other one is 14. And I did tell them too. I was like, your father is an alcoholic. Your mother is a cocaine addict. Like the, 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 the chances that you probably have some issues with addiction is probably very high. So that's what I wanted to do. That's why I wanted to share to help others and to also bring the awareness to my own children that this could be a problem. So be careful. Yeah, that's a really good point because that that is a challenging thing to navigate with ch when we have children. Is like how much of my past do I want to let them know about, and how much? Yes, I, I know. It? And yeah. I'm telling you, with Google now, you just you get you, <laughs> if it's out there, they'll find out when they're eight. <laughs> so. My my second thing that I would that I that I would like tell people like once you see the consequences would be like why not like yeah. what do you have to lose right yeah. um uh, put it out there and know that you you might feel alone right now we all have felt alone but no matter what you're going through somebody else out there has is, is going through exactly the same thing that you're going. And they're going to see your story and they're going to be like, oh, I'm not alone. And you're going to help that person. So you have nothing, like, if you don't have nothing to lose, like, I'm telling you, do it. Do it. And it, it gets easier each time you do it. Like, the first time that I sat in front of, like, something or wrote something, I was sweating, I was shaky. And yeah. here I am, you know, with you today. It's like, it's, it, I, I, I'm not no longer, no longer scared by my story, no longer scared what's going to happen. It's like, this is me, this is who I am. But yeah, it was scary at first. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you got to get past that. That is a great answer. Another good answer. Thank you, Lottie. I mean, I can feel your excitement and passion. So uh, it's infectious. It makes me want to be a little more open just hearing you. Uh, good. <laughs> good. Amazing. Then I've done my job. All right. Um, I am curious too. I, I, I want to touch upon, I noticed that you are a huge inspiration in the breast cancer survivor world as well. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about your experience? I mean, you've had this like major health issue that you were able to overcome and then another one comes to yeah. you. At this point, do you feel like I've been through this before? I know I can get through this. Or do you have a major kind of coming to terms with life and death moment? as this next issue comes along. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So when I first got sick and I first um, uh, was going through all those surgery here, surgery, here, surgery, here, I got very depressed. Remember I told you I was very quiet with it. Nobody knew I had an ostomy until my ostomy was reversed. Like I wouldn't talk about it. Nobody, I was, it was so private to me and I was so uncomfortable with it that I, I, I think holding on to that and going through all those horrible um, experiences at hospitals and failed surgeries and that, that's when I noticed is where I had relapses mm. from, you know, from being sober. Like I said, sobriety is not linear. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you relapse, you pick up your pants, you, you pick up your, you, you put your, you know, dig your panties on the next day and then you do it again. Yeah. That's what I noticed that, that that's when my dark times were. I was holding mm. all these shame, all these dark stuff that my body like had. And when I found out that I had breast cancer, I, I said to myself, I don't want to go back to that, to those dark times. And I don't want to ever do drugs. Um, I don't ever want to like 
feel like I felt those days. Um, so I then I was like, okay, so I, I have to then do something with this because I've had 20 surgeries and an ostomy and fell surgeries and you name it. I mean, we've had in, in our marriage, my husband and our 20 years, we've been together 20 years, married, married 19. And I mean, you name it, it has happened to us. Okay. In, in, in our personal lives, in our, in his business. And it's like, um, so it, it, we've made it through a lot. So I was like, the fact that if you believe in God, God or the universe has given me this is because I need to help others. And how can I help others? Um, so after finding out that I had breast cancer, uh, like this is like Mother's Day weekend back in 2012, I had going back to my first yoga teacher, which is Tara Styles. Part, so Tara Styles was then and still is now a yoga celebrity in the internet community and even much more than that. So when we did the teacher training with her, one of the things, her big platform at the time was YouTube. I don't know if she YouTubes anymore, but like she, she has a huge platform on YouTube. So she said, as part of your teacher training, I want you guys to blog, blog, like on YouTube, like go in there and just talk to the camera, talk yoga, non yoga, whatever you want, like just develop your, you know, develop your skills, whatever. So I, I did, and it was really uncomfortable again at first because like talking to, like we're used to talking to computers now and talking to phones, and, but back in 2012, that was not something that like, I, I, was, I was really, really uncomfortable, but she made us do that. That was part of our teacher training, develop a blog, a blog. So I had like my first blog on like WordPress and like that. So to like, you need to get your name out there because as a yoga teacher, you need to get your name out there. So people come to your classes and she gave us like this marketing genius that she is uh, to us. So, so I've, so I've already had like a, this YouTube channel. Um, I started uh, yoga. Uh, I was already a yoga teacher. I was already had my, you know, following my local following, uh, nothing too big on, in, like on, on social media, but some social media stuff because of Tara Styles, you know? So I picked up my phone and it was the morning uh, after I found out I had breast cancer and I opened my phone and my husband and I were in bed and I turned the phone on and I put the, the video on and I said, I woke up, like literally I just woke up and I like tapped on my husband and he, he, him and I are like, uh, like we're, we're, we're so like, uh, we're so alike. So like he follows my lead. I follow his lead, whatever he, whatever it is. So I tap him and then he's, he wakes up. He's the world's like happiest person in the morning. So no matter when you wake him up, he's like, good morning. <laughs> so I tapped him and, he, and I say, good morning. And he's like, good morning. And then he's like, I'm like, can you believe that breast cancer? And then he's like, no. And then we just continue to have that conversation, like in no, bed, no. just about not believing, like after all I've gone through, after we have gone through, like no. now here it is. Wow. And then, then it started to be a daily thing, sometimes even multiple times a day. I would, then I would upload them to Facebook, I mean, um, YouTube, then Facebook, you know, and then it became a thing. Then uh, I had uh, friends that wrote for the Elephant Journal and they're like, hey, can we put your videos in the Elephant Journal? And then, then I started to be more like, oh, okay, I'm getting this audience. Okay, what else can I do? I will share everything. And one of the first things that I did is I, I, back in 2012, I would Google like double mastectomies and you would see a lot of women. Like I never saw a face of a double mastectomy. Like mm -hmm. it would just be from chest to like the bottom of, yeah. and I was like, I want to give that a face. Like I want it. So I took, I had, I think maybe even one of our kids, I had no shirt on after my double mastectomy mm -hmm. and my husband like stood behind me and I just stood with my arms on mm -hmm my yeah. waist kind of like the super superman superwoman pose and yeah. i was like yep this is me and this is i just i had spacers no nipples nothing and yeah. the scars were fresh and yeah. then that also kind of went viral on like the yoga um elephant journal stuff and then i started then then i started to post more and more about that then i would get emails and comments and stuff people like i'm going through the same thing uh, and I'm at the same process as you. Thank you. Cause or, or like, I'm right behind you. So like, now I know what's yeah. coming Yeah. and 
and one of the the ones that would always stay with me it's uh the women would 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 message me saying like oh your husband because he was there with all of my videos if he wasn't next to me he was taking them mm. um like your husband is so amazing like my husband left me when he found that i had breast cancer and it's like wow. shocking to me because i had i got so many of those messages wow. like husbands that left their wives when they found out their breast cancer because they couldn't handle a woman with no breasts they couldn't handle going through that you know whatever they were going through and it was crazy to me wow it was crazy and sad yeah, yeah. especially if you had that level of support that you did to think about what uh, to go through that experience and not have that kind of support to actually have the opposite of that to have people it was walking away to from you that's incredible i can see where then that connection that you've made on a you know, global community in relation to offering some inspiration and honesty and like just straight up, like, this is me. I can see where <laughs> that that's powerful. Yeah. It was, uh, it, it, these women that I heard from were, th their experiences were powerful to me too, that, like to, to hear that. And I, also I, I felt very lucky to have the husband that I had and like always constantly reminded that, that like, wow, like, I already knew he was the greatest, but like now after hearing this story, he's even greater, <laughs> you know? Oh, and I, and yeah, right. My, that improved your relationship yeah. because it was validation of what you do have. Almost like you could take that for granted. Like, isn't everybody's husband just supporting them like this? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's, that's yeah. what I thought. I yeah. thought, oh, husband yeah. says like, don't worry, honey, yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. I don't care what you look like. I'm here. I'll, I'll even pay for everything, you know, like that's. Uh, not like no, not everybody has husbands like that. And that was I, I would people. imagine you, Lottie, that the support would be so overwhelming to the maybe tiny little portion that would make. Did you ever receive any criticism and or kickback from? Because anytime we break through cultural and customary norms, you know, there's going to be someone's going to get their feathers ruffled, or no. In this case, was that not it? Because I, I hear like it was more, very, uh, very very small um percentage of people mm, cool. that would be like ew why would you share that yeah but yeah. it was so it was maybe like in a post maybe two comments three comments i've always been very lucky that i don't get much hate um stuff in my social media channels like much more inspiration people you're an inspiration you inspire me than like ew like yes there are a few of them but not that many not enough that even bother me one thing that I would guess that could be, Lottie, is because you're overcoming serious life challenges like, you know, that not everybody survives, you know, yeah. not everybody survives yeah. these different illnesses and health issues. I mean, just right now, I kind of thought, hopefully, this is a, I don't get the feeling you, any question I asked would be, you'd be opposed to, but did you, do you ever have survivor's guilt? Sometimes I oh, hear people that- so are, much. Do you feel that? Yeah, so much. Especially, okay, some of the women that I met through the journey didn't make it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And yeah, there was, there, there, there was, oh, for sure. So every time somebody that I know dies from cancer, it like festers up a little bit. Like, yeah. like why them? Like, why was I giving a second chance? Yeah. Um, and, then, and then I'm like, okay, then... That's when it, it makes me think like, this is why you just have to be kind. And like, you know, I, I, I started a hashtag on Instagram years ago called be kind all the time yeah. um, because I was, um, uh, I was not kind to somebody in, in, a, in, in an Instagram post. And it was, I was mean to her. Like she was having a bad day and she posted about it. Um, I, I, I could say her name cause she, she, um, she's a, she's a dear friend of mine. And we talk, when I talk, I always make jokes about it, but yoga girl, Rachel Braden, mm -hmm. um, she, I, I said something, she has been a bad day and I don't know, it just rubbed me the wrong way. And I did, i not to make up excuses, but I, I used to suffer from chronic, oh, I still suffer from chronic constipation and, um, I was like on day nine of no pooping. And if you ever had constipation, you know, like that's the worst feeling in the world. Um, and it was like a day nine of no pooping and I was so like angry. And then she said something and I, and I said something mean about her. And I think in my own post or in her post or whatever. And I felt so bad because I'm not mean spirit person. Like 
I, I'm a nice person. I think it comes from, you know, I was born this way. Like, I don't want anybody. I don't even like competition. Like, cause I don't want to win because <laughs> then I mean, somebody loses <laughs> and then I feel bad, you know, like that's the person that I am. So like, I'm, I don't have like a mean streak like that. And then the next day, like I was so mean to her and then like spiral, like some older stuff. And the next day I felt so bad. I emailed her and she was so kind and she accepted my apology. And then we be, we went on to become friends and I'm part of her. I was part of her 108 uh, teaching and she came, has come and stayed here with me. And we Aww. went to Aruba to stay with her. Um, so when I was going through all that stuff, I started this, this hashtag and I was like, oh, be kind all the time. Yuladi. I don't care what you're feeling. If you're on day nine, day 29, we're not pooping. I don't care if you, <laughs> I don't care if you're like, if you're like, just be kind. And even if they're, jerks to you just be kind be kind all the time so i started that um that uh the hashtag and i i, I like to think that whenever i'm feeling those the guilt i'm like okay now i just got to show kindness to somebody i don't you know like just just be kind to somebody like compliment somebody's shoes or like just really look at somebody and see the beauty and then and tell them about them like you know like so i try to spread kindness it's my thing. It's my, I, my kids, I'm always telling them, be kind all the time. I drop them off at school before I be kind all the time, you know? Um, so like that feels like that's how it helps me when I get these, these feelings of like, uh, why me? Why, why did I survive? And so many didn't. Yeah. That, that now your mission is to spread kindness. So if yeah, you have this, I like up, it. yeah, that's amazing. You lot you know, I'm really thankful to John and Mandy Coleman because John introduced me to you and he, you know, beside everything you spoke of, he says, oh my gosh, you got to talk to this woman, Yulati. She is just out of this world. She is so amazing. You're going to, you got it. You got to reach out to her. He said, she is just phenomenal as a runner. He's like, I mean, I've coached people in, you know, running and I mean, I just can't even believe what, what she, like, she just blows my mind. And so we haven't even talked about that part of your life yet. And yeah. I'm curious, um, how did you start? How did you have, what is your story with cultivating a passion for run and where are you at currently with your run love? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Getting back to uh, John and Mandy, also the kindest, nicest humans in the world. Yes. I love them. And I'm so okay. thankful to yoga for have put them in our lives. My husband and I both love them very much. They're amazing. And yes, you're, you're lucky to know them. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Um, so, okay. So what, what happened is uh, after having many years of constipation, chronic constipation, my body shut down. And it stopped just going to the bathroom altogether. And um, I'd had my ostomy, my first ostomy reverse. Now I've had like 26 surgeries, 25 surgeries, uh -huh. all due to like breast cancer, uh, uh, ostomy and tumors and everything. So then finally, after my body shuts down of you know, not pooping, I go back to a doctor and the doctor, my doctor says, listen, I think we have to go back to your colostomy bag. And I'm like, no. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. And then he's like, okay, that I don't think it's anything else is going to work. So I went back to it. I, I was like, all right, radical acceptance. I'm like, okay, I get my bag. It's going to save my life. It, I get the bag. It doesn't work. No. I have like, um, from, I get this bag in 2015 and up to 2018, I'm in and out of hospitals, people pain that I, uh, pain that I've never had before. Um, uh, people, people, doctors can't figure out what's wrong. Um, this ostomy bag, I'm so mad. I, I, this time I'm much more, uh, I, I'm sharing all of this online. Like and now every, the world knows I have an ostomy. The world knows I have a poop in a bag. I'm not keeping that stuff in anymore. Um, so I, I go back to, I, so I, in this, in this from 50, 20, 2015 to 2018, I can't practice very much yoga. Every time I go, I do yoga, um, a down dog, like I have very tight in the chest from uh, double mastectomy. Then my, then my belly would get tight. Then I wouldn't poop. Mm -hmm. And so I have to start like doing yoga. And I, it's my number one thing. I practice yoga sometimes multiple times a day for many years. 
Um, I went into a depression again and I was like, okay, when I, I went back to, um, after my second son was, after my first son was born, uh, and being sober for a long time from not doing cocaine, I went back to drinking. Um, I like did an experiment. I was like, I, and I, you know, if you're in the program, I don't, I don't suggest you do this, but this is my personal journey. My personal, you know, I was yes. like, I had a glass of wine and I could say to my husband, I was like, I don't think I have a drinking problem. I just stopped drinking because I didn't want to do cocaine. And my husband's like, yeah, go ahead. And he, um, he went to the liquor store and got me a bottle of wine and I've been having wine ever since. So I don't have a drinking problem. I drink, um, like a normal person. Um, so what are we talking about? I lost my train of thought. Good. No, that was actually really interesting. But, but we're, uh, going down the track of how you got inspired to run. Oh, to run. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I do drink and, and I'm going to say to say, because I got depressed and how I noticed was I was depressed was because I was drinking a lot. I was having wine every day and you know, it's okay to have one every day, but like, it's okay not to have a bottle every day. Yeah. And I knew I was in trouble because I was sick all the time and I was in pain all the time in the hospital all the time. So um, my family, they came to me and they said, I think we think you have, you've, I think we think you're depressed. Like mm -hmm. I'm still functioning, but whenever I'm not needed as mom and as, and, and as wife, I'm on the couch watching Netflix mm -hmm. and no, like, that's not me and I, I can't practice yoga because it hurts i've never done cardio my whole entire life so i can't do it, it everything is hurting my body yeah. so i knew that it was a, a problem so i was like all right when it, i i met a friend who done vipassana um meditation yeah. and she said it helped her a lot and i don't know what that came to mind i was like all right let me reset everything in my brain in my body I will go see a psychiatrist and I will go on medication if I need to, but let me just do this my way. Like, let me do it this way first. Mm -hmm. I need 10 days. I need, to, I'm going to go on a silent retreat. And I've done like three days before years ago and I loved it, but mm -hmm. 10 days is a commitment. A and one. I have children in, in like, they have to go to school. And this was in September, like when, but my mother-in-law, who is the greatest human being, my, I have the best in-laws. And my husband said, you go do that. And yes. we'll take care of the children. Isn't it amazing? And they did. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And you did your so first I was, day course. Yeah. I did my first day, 10, 10 day course and it was life changing. It oh, was yeah. a reset of the brain. I came out a different person. I can't explain to you what happens, what happened like, um, like uh, in my brain. But I just know that when you sit in silence for that long, yeah. something happens. Like you can't run away from you. I've done, I've done a few myself. Oh my gosh. Like, how, yeah, yeah. How can you possibly explain that? Yeah. You have you to just go do you it. Have to, yeah. You have to just yeah. go do it. Yeah. Yep. You have to go do it, experience it. And then a, I came out and I was okay. I was mm -hmm. no longer depressed. Um, I was able to do, you know, to be just, you know, mom and everything, continue my meditation practice. Um, I'm sad to say I don't do it as often as I should anymore, but, um, Finally, fast forward into 2018, I had a really bad hospital stay and then they found the problem, the issue of my problems of, uh, it was a huge blockage in the stomach. So I got really blocked up. I was in the hospital for nine days, an NG tube, feeding tube, oh. but the doctor fixed the problem and I haven't had any issues, knock on wood, ever since. Yes. And so the, that was all 12, the, then 2019, the whole year I like just got my, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm like, is this going to happen again? I mean, it's been happening for years. I'm going to be in the hospital again and it never did. So I was like, okay, I have to start doing something because I, obviously I'm not getting sick again. Like I, I could work out. So I started with, I was like, all right, I'm about to be 40 years old. So I think I want to do cardio because I've never done cardio my whole entire life. I hate running. I don't have a bike. So I'm going to get, but my kids had jump ropes. So I was like, I'm going to get jump ropes. Nice. So then I started jump roping. Yeah. yeah. And I did months of that. And then this is, then my 40th birthday was coming at the end of 2019. And I said to my husband, I want a Peloton bike. Like, I know it sounds crazy. I know they're expensive, but like, I won one. And he like, he looked, he's like, it's not that bad. We could finance it, blah, blah, blah. So, I, and then I fell in love with the Peloton bike and I started, I, I got my cardio up with that. And I loved it. I was dedicated to it. 
Um, then one day during the height of the pandemic in 2020, I decided in August, 2020, I was like, I kept seeing this little boy that runs around my neighborhood. And at the time we didn't know his name. We called him Frank. Now we're friends. I, I told him that he inspired me to run. His name is Ian, but at the time, you know, we didn't have, we didn't know his name. Frank <laughs> would run and I was like, I'm going to go for a run. And then my husband's like, go for a run. And I'm like, all right. So I went and I didn't die. Like, I, I think right. I, I, I try to, I, I tried to run before because one of my kids is a runner and I hated it and I just couldn't breathe. And it was not a comfortable experience for me. And this time it was fine. I loved it. I was like, oh, I can't wait to wow. do this again. Wow. So I kept doing it until one day um, I, came, I, I, I went out and did five miles, like a five mile loop. And I came in and my husband's like, wait, did you do that loop? And then he knew what the loop was because he's a biker. Yeah. So he knows, like, he knew that that took five. He goes, well, that was kind of fast for a five mile run <laughs> for somebody just started running like three, four weeks ago. And I didn't run with a watch or anything. Uh, and I was like, I don't know. Like, and then yeah. he then gave me a watch, his watch, his Garmin. And then he's like, okay. And he started timing me and he's like, oh, babe, I think you're fast. And I'm like, okay. And then I started just pushing <laughs> myself. And then one day I, I knew that John was a, John was a very successful coach. He had running coach. Like he, he coached college. And so I just, I was like, John, can you help me out here? And then he, he, he would give me these work. I was like, on Monday, you'll do these. On Tuesday, you'll do these. On Wednesday, you'll do these. And then I would just like give him my, my, my splits. And he's like, okay, like, this is good. And then like he had me do mall repeats and then um, I would go faster than what he asked because obviously I wanted to show off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he's like, okay, you have a talent and I'm 40 years old. I, you know, like I, I, I yeah. don't have anywhere to go with this. Just like yeah. running because I want to hook you up with this lady. Her name is Diane D'Alvero and she runs a, run, she's a run co running coach and she runs a group, all women, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, yeah, whatever. Let me just, you know, uh, who, you know, like I didn't take it seriously. And then I, um, a few weeks later, a few months later, I heard her on the radio because she's a radio, she's in a, she's in a radio show. And uh, I was like, okay, this is fate. I have to, I have to call, I have to call this lady. So I did, I hooked up with her. And then in the meantime, I, I, I was, she said, I told her I'm training for a half marathon and a marathon, which was AC half in, um, the Philly fall and she's like all right when you're done with that let's get together and you know we'll run together so I did the AC half well so I did a first a 5k and I came first women's for the for the oh, 5k nice. and I did it completely wrong I went out too fast I died but it was still a sub sub 25k so I was really happy with it yeah and then I did and then I, I hired a, a different running coach like somebody that would just give me like a I could, you know, every day that I'm still doing, because I know John is retired. I don't want to bother him. No. Um, um, and then she gave me, uh, 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 I use the AC half as a training run for the Philly fall. And then I went and I ran in an hour and 27 minutes in five seconds and came second women. And I won money for that. Wow. I was so excited. Yeah. And, it was like now you're pro. It, now you're pro. I, yeah. Now pro. That's what my husband says. Like you're a pro runner now. I'm like yay! <laughs> so I was really excited because again, like I, in yoga, I was good at yoga. I never played any sports in school. I never had any any means to play sports. So uh, again, I'm like, oh, my ego is boosted. Like, oh, I'm yeah. good at this. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm gonna go with it. I fell in love even more, and then I ran Philly 2021, and like every mar first marathoner went out too fast. I died towards the end but i you know but i did it i did it in three hours and 12 minutes wow. and um I, I had that then i had the marathon you know bug and now then yeah. i then while i was i got injured and um but before i got injured i joined diane the olivero and her running team and we did a bunch of um track stuff so like we went to nationals where i won first for the 3000 in my age group Wow. And then we went to the pain relays where our team won first place. Oh. And then um, 
we uh, then uh, then just like local stuff we did. Uh, I love running with this lady because out of all of them, I'm not the fastest, and I love them because some of them are even older than me and they're faster than me, and so inspiring. Like yeah. this is, and we're a good community. And then, yeah. um, what else have I done? So I, I just ran Philly last November. We're in. I followed you with my- that. I followed you on Instagram for that one, and it oh. looked like it was brutal. Just it like was afterward, so you're like, you're like, never again. Or I don't know if that's how you feel now, but it just, what, because of the wind and because of the temperature. And then you said something yes. about you went like the, not the wrong way or something, the way they were directing you down the course, you were like, they weren't really clear about which way you had to go. So it just, oh, like yeah. confusion in the experience. Which- at the beginning. Yes. At the beginning of the, uh, they, they, they direct us before the, the marathon started. So and we have like minutes to get to to the starting line and we're like oh my god the you know, you have to walk around so like now we're all stressed like everybody that's in there <laughs> yeah. and then we got to start stressed and it's just awful then I, I like i knew it was gonna be cold because it was that week the whole week was in the 20s and it felt like it was lower than the 20s but yeah. i didn't know it was gonna be this windy oh. and i didn't run with a pace group because they didn't have a pace group that matched my pace yeah. and now that i look back i should have just ran with the pace group but you know, it, it, you live, you learn. Mm-hmm. And so I started and I think I like, I don't know, I would say three, four miles, like a, a mile three, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong because I just didn't feel that good. And again, something that I know when I step onto the, onto the starting line at a marathon, I know that this is going to happen sometimes, maybe all the time is I have constipation issues. If I don't poop that morning, that's it. And you feel like poop if you don't, you know, I saw, no pun, I saw pun you intended. Post, I saw you posting kind of like, yeah. oh no, I haven't pooped yet. Yeah. This is not good. This nope. Is, yeah. I drank my coffee. I drank my juice. I was like, this yeah. is not good. Nothing's coming yeah. out. Like, yeah. And I'd carb loaded too for like three days. So like, I have a lot in me. It needs to come out. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? So I felt <laughs> sluggish and stuff, but. I was like, all right, I've ran like this before and I've made it through. So that's okay. Yeah. Then the cold, I'm like, it's okay. It felt like I had leggings on the whole time and I didn't, which is like my legs were just numb from the cold. Yeah. But like, I was like, I could do that. Then the wind, like like a mile eight, the wind just like Ooh, yeah. was, a mile eight, it's like a little hill you climb and the wind was so, and it just like, it took my soul. I was like, oh my God, no, please, no. And, and Philly's not flat. Many people will tell you Philly's flat and it's not. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. And then like, it felt like every time that I was running up a hill, the wind was just like in my face and uh, it, was, it, was, it was awful. So I couldn't keep my pace completely. And by the time I got to mile 20, which is like a hell that I'm climbing, and I was, I was like, I lost it. I was like, this is it. I'm just, I kept telling myself, my mantra was, finish this, finish this race, don't, don't DNF, but just finish and note that you don't ever have to do this again. You don't ever have to do it again. That was my mantra. Finish this. You don't have to do this again. Finish this. So that kept me, I crossed the line. I called my husband. I was like, I am not running Boston because I qualified to run Boston uh, in the spring. And I'm like, there's no way I could do this again. This sucked. This was really bad. I finished in three hours and 15 minutes. And honestly, I thought I was going to finish in three hours and 45 minutes because that's how slow it felt like I was running. You still powered And then I still still powered powered through, you know? Yeah. That's a fast time. For anyone that doesn't understand marathon times, that's a fast time. It's it's a very fast time. Yeah, it's it's a very fast time. So even while you're feeling like absolute crap, you're still pumping out a crazy fast time. So what, where is this coming from, Yuladi? I don't know. Maybe it was always there. Uh, like, I, I, I like to say that um, I like the pain that I feel when I run because it's, mm-hmm. it's self-inflicted pain that I, I'm, I am doing it to myself. Mm-hmm. The, the pain that I lived before, like all those many years in and out of hospitals and pain that like, I go there sometimes and be like, I've done that. I could do this. So it's like uh, this pain that I feel when I run, I could hang here for a long time, 26.2 miles, because I've been there before in different places of my life. And I think that has helped me stay in the pain, 
accept the pain because that's what marathoning is. Marathoning is, yes, it's going to hurt no matter how fast or slow you're going, right? Even if you're a slow run, the meet 26 miles hurt. Yeah. It's getting yeah. comfortable with that. Can you, can you stay there? Can you be there? Then I think, uh, I think a lot of that perseverance of like wanting to run marathons and, and be good at them. It's because of the pain that I had before the speed. I don't know. I just, I, I, I maybe like, I maybe I, I was, I was definitely probably born with it, you know, and just, I, I never really tapped into it cause I never ran. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. Ilati. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. It's, I mean, it was, uh, oh, so let me tell you, I finished, <laughs> it took me an hour to get from Philly to New Jersey. I get in the shower and I'm like, can't wait to run Boston. I'm so it, excited. It came back that fast. It only that took fast. that long. One it's hour. Obviously, <laughs> obviously you are going to run the Boston yeah. and yeah. can you, can you give me, a, I know we scheduled in for an hour and we're coming on, on our times on our time a lot. Uh, yeah. And, Go ahead. I'm, my kids don't okay. get home until two. So I'm two 30. So I'm good. And I had someone cancel after for me this one. So I'm not on a crunch right now, which I'm happy about, but okay. please tell okay, me okay. if if something happens and you have to run <laughs> literally, no, let me know. But, um, <laughs> literally. so what is your vision for the future? Um, not that you need to go into the future. I know as, yeah, yogis, no. as yogis, we need to just be really content with the present moment but I also know you, you have, you're a visionary. I mean, you seem like a visionary. You've overcome so many obstacles that surely at some point you've done manifestation work and, or you are an example of manifestation work, at least from being able to overcome these hurdles. So if you, when you do that type of work now, if you do, what are you seeing? What is your goal? What do you, what do you want to achieve even beyond what you have achieved? Oh, that's a good question. There's so many, so many things I want to achieve. Uh, like in my running career, I, I like to get faster. So I like to, to run a marathon faster. Um, how fast, honestly, I don't know. I don't care anymore. Just, I want to do better than I did my last one, you know? So that's, that's what I want. That's what I want to do. I want to be the world's greatest grandmother to my little Noli and hopefully I have much, much more. Um, uh, I have the most amazing uh, family, right? I have, I've always said that I didn't have my health for many years and maybe I still don't because I still have some issues and right now I'm good. Right now I'm fine. I live in, I live in a lot of discomfort all the time, but that's something that as long as it's not pain, I can handle it. So I don't have fully 100% of my health, but I do have the best family and the best um, husband, really. Like he is amazing. So I want to enjoy my time with him. Like now our kids are getting older. They're going, so we got 40 years before they all go to college. I want, I want to hang out with him. I want to travel I have, because I've had children for since such a young age, I've never, I haven't really gotten to see very much of the world. Yeah, I, I traveled to India, I traveled to Thailand, but like my dream is to just like pick up in, like you, if you say like, I'm hosting a retreat in blah, blah, blah. I could just be like, Todd, I'm coming. You know, <laughs> like, so like, I want to go to a, a location and with my husband, do yoga, go for a run. That's what, that's where my, what I think of when I think about the future um um what else and just like be very present about it and yeah. and spread kindness <laughs> everywhere I go that's amazing that's a great dream thank you that seems like a really grounded dream like you've already found a certain you've achieved you've embodied a certain level of contentment so now it's just exactly icing, that's exactly right yeah that's exactly right. It's, it's, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get away from what I have. I just want to travel to see the world, but I want to bring everything that I have in my daily life with me because my daily life, it's perfect. 
Yeah. Like I'm so content. You're right. I'm so content with everything. I don't want to run away from any from anything. Um, like I that's, said, that's really it, cool. Part of it. Thanks. You know, that's really cool because uh, sometimes uh, in the uh, endurance sport world, we'll come across this idea that well, runners and or triathletes and or crazy people that do these crazy endurance events are just trying to get away from something like. Yeah. Um, there must be something there and we're just running to get away from it. And, and, but I don't know the way that you've presented this idea and, and through your example, it's almost not so much to run away from something, maybe running towards something. I mean, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I, do you believe it's possible to be present and enjoy these type of activities and not have some demon that we're running from or. It seems like you're there. Do you, do you have you encountered those ideas though? And in, in your own it's a, it's sort of healing process? Very, um, it, yes. Yes. And I'm so glad we t- we're talking about this because yes, I don't have to run away from anything. I, I, I don't. Yeah, and I, and I do hear about endurance athletes, you know, having some demons that they have to run away from. And you hear that a lot in not me. I, I feel very content with, um, I know when I, ha- when I did have a lot of demons and this is how I know that I'm healthy. It's because when I wasn't healthy, I needed to have people around me and I needed, I couldn't be alone. Not with my thoughts, not with myself. Now I love being alone. You know, it's not, it's not something that I want to be, do all the time. But when I, when I am alone, I'm like, okay, I like me. I look in the mirror. I like, I like what I see. I look next to me. I like my, I like the children that I've raised. I like the husband that I picked. Everything is not. I don't want to run away from any of this. So yes, I'm running towards something. I, I wonder why. I, I want. I want. I wish I could give you an answer. Of what am I running towards? Mm. But I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I you know. I recently read a book that uh, was pointing out. You know, heal yourself. And you, if you've been to every single doctor in the world, and they don't have an answer for you. You can tap into self-healing. You're somebody who has, in my opinion, benefited greatly from the medical community and establishment. Mm -hmm. Maybe, probably maybe wouldn't be here if you hadn't had that type of level of care. Mm -hmm. You also seem like somebody who appreciates, you are somebody who appreciates meditation, yoga, and all of the elements that come with that. What is your experience of finding the balance between accepting help from the medical community and self-healing and self-care? Great question. I one of my things that somebody asked me if if you if you want to go back in time, where would you go back? And I always say, um, I, I I guess it. it it changed in the past year, but before that, and I'll tell you why it changed in the past year. Before that, I would say that that day when the doctor said, let's do a biopsy, I sh- you know, I would go back and say, no, let me get a second opinion and a third opinion. No, why? You know, I didn't question. It. I was like, all right, you know, and that's what snow, like, that's how it, it everything snowballed into my medical illness. Cause my medical illness was, was a man-made, you know, it was not something I was born with. Um, so um, it, it, it has changed because my dad died last year and in and, and, and February. So now when people ask me that, I, I say, I just want to go back to a time when my dad is alive. <laughs> you know, that, that that's why it has changed. But for many years, it was that other one. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah. So, like, I, that's, that have had have happened to, to me. I had a hard time trusting the medical field. And then I learned how to ask questions. I learned, you know, can I get a second opinion? Um, there were times where um, for many years, I could have gotten like a, a harsh procedure, but, you know, to help me, I, I chose go, I, I used to be, I was raw vegan for a while and that helped me at that time of math. It didn't help anymore. So I went back to just a regular diet, but like, instead of go, going for another surgery, that helped, you know, instead of getting for another just six years of colonics help, you know, help me li- live six years instead of having another surgery. So there had been, there'd been like a, a nice level, uh, like educated guests, you know, edu- educated answers. Like, this is where I want, this is when it came down to cancer, 
it was very, very apparent to me that I wanted to live. And the only answer to me was chemo, radiation, and a double mastectomy. Yep. Yep. Many people would, would, uh, would uh, email me and say, try the GERSA method, try this, try go and roll, try. And I'm like, I will try all that, but I'm still going to do chemo and radiation and all this stuff because that's how I feel that an educated, like uh, educated um, research that I did and talking to many friends that were doctors, talking to my husband and my in-laws who are crazy smart people. It's what, you know, what, um, that's why I came to that conclusion. So yeah, I mixed a little bit of both, you know, I went through all my chemo, my radiation while I was still eating a very healthy diet. Like I did both, you know? So mm-hmm. yes, there's, there's a happy medium that I encourage everybody to find on their own. That's great advice. I think that's another thing that you, that I'm appreciating listening to you talk is having the ability to find that balance and, um, and you are here now, you Lottie. Like you're here now. So that's pretty amazing. Very lucky for that. Yeah. The, decisions you made, <laughs> the decisions you made have, um, if we, if we wanted affirmation, were they good or not? I think so. Yeah, it's, it's, I, my life is not perfect by any means, but I love all the imperfections, mm. you know, and, and my journey has made me you know, realize, figure out to appreciate everything. Yes. But did you sneeze? God bless you. Oh yeah. I turned my volume down so I could sneeze. I see you. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. <sighs> oh my gosh. Well, Yulati, I am, this is a real, you know, a big moment for me. I feel honored to have this opportunity to speak with you. I love podcasting. Um, I'm super excited because I'm going to release this podcast next week and it's going to be my hundredth episode. And I was like planning this around you because I was, or or I was trying to coordinate it where, and then when we had to cancel the last time, I was like, Oh no, am I going to pull this off? Am I going to pull this off? Like, Uh and then when we got this date, I'm like, it's going to work. It's going to work. She's going to be number 100. So, um, I'm so happy. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you for being so understanding. The the night of the podcast that you, that that, the the night before I Mm. was so sick. Well, I was, first of all, I have a little bit of an injury on my, um, on my, on my knee from running. It's, it's nothing major. It's, it's, It's on its way to healing. And then I just getting over COVID and my stomach was a hot mess all night. So I was up all night and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm not going to be able to like answer his questions. No. And one of my biggest fears is sounding dumb. <laughs> so, so I was like, I'm going to sound dumb when, the, when the, somebody's going to ask me a question. It's going to go on one ear, not the other. And I had else like, so I built up that fear of like, I'm going to sound dumb. And I was like, I, and it was good that I canceled because I was in a, like a trance yeah. state all day. I could honestly go all day without eating, two days without eating, and I'm fine. One night or no sleep, I'm a mess. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you are the opposite of dumb. <laughs> Thank You're very you. smart. <laughs> and whatever you did last night to this point here, good job. You seem with great spirits. You said you feel Thank pain. you. You said you feel pain regularly. I don't pick that up off you. So how you pull that off, amazing. Thank um, you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's super inspirational, Yulati. Well, again, thank you. This is amazing. I really appreciate it. I hope that I get a chance to meet you in person and your husband. He sounds so absolutely too. amazing and your children and your grandson. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I was going to end it with asking, do you have anything you want to close with and or something inspirational? But I feel like you've covered all the bases already. But on that note, before we do sign off, is there anything else that you would like to add? Ah, uh, no, listen, just be kind all the time. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Lottie. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you.